in the outback, having reliable communications is essential. We, however, don't have many cell towers around, which people often rely on for their communications. Out here, we've got a solution. This is my mobile phone tower. This allows us to have high speed communications from anywhere on the station, anywhere in the outback, to everywhere in the world. All right. <clears throat> so, we're back with another Starlink. Since we did our first video on the Starlink mods and the different Starlink frames that we can use out here in Australia, we've had another one get sent to us. And that one is from Trackify. Now, we use Trackify for our logbooks for on our road trains, and we've found it to be really effective system. So Trackify also started making Starlink frames so that drivers can have internet on the go wherever they are, particularly for remote areas. So this one is designed for the Outback. We're gonna have a look at it and install it into one of our Starlinks we've got here today. And we're gonna talk about some of the changes to Starlink and in motion use that there are around some of the changes that have occurred to the Starlink plans and what's gonna be best for your Outback setup, plus some configuration settings, which we've found and different setups for powering them in remote areas. Let's open up this box. Now, first up, it's a nice small package, so shipping doesn't cost a whole lot. All right, so it's held in with some Allen keys and there's some pressure relief slots. So it looks like I've got a bit of unscrewing today. All right, so I've undone all of those hex head screws. Let's open them up and have a look at what we've got. Much like the other ones, we've got pre-mapped spots for the zip ties and we have a nice Ikea bag, cable ties, a Sharpie for marking up, clearly a uh, special designed Sharpie holder again, which is nice, silica to keep everything dry inside, the cable ties, and some long screws, which I reckon would be for attaching the hard mount system. So it's got different brackets you can get. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's close him up and get to chopping a Starlink up. You get a lot more casual the more you do. The fear is gone. Yes, yes. You go, nah, roughly there, and then you know that you're gonna trim it anyway, so you just fucking cut into it. No, so if you pick that up and shake it a bit. Yeah, it's got a bit of a rattle. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's because, like his instructions say keep it at, you know, 20 millimeters exactly, and I went, well, everything else we found is that you just take it out a little bit more. His instructions are heaps better than anything else we came across. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, no, they were outstanding. I'm sure this comes all the way through when we... Oh, no, it was this end that we unclipped. Yeah, we smashed something. Yeah, there's ferrite. Right. Right. Just pull that out of there, and then you pull it this way. I'd put a bit of silicon in there just to take the rattle out. Yeah, so it's not actually taking that long. I really want a beer. <laughs> I really want a beer. No, I'm just about done. One of the kits came with a little thing of silicon. Yeah, the one that we didn't like, but we've been using the most. Yeah. 
warning mate, irritate eyes and skin. So he points to his eye. Get well, how else are you meant to read it? That's not a detox. <laughs> I told you I needed that beer. There you go. Just so you can see it. Yeah. Okay, Jack. Got the smallest piece of chalk we could find. We did get the smallest piece of chalk. Now we've got, this is, this is our solar. Solar. Then we have a battery and this is load. Okay, right. So that's the solar charge controller. Okay, so that's got three main inputs and outputs so you have solar going in which is called pv then you've got you hook up your battery because the solar is charging the battery and then you have your load and that's anything that you want to power from the battery which is recharged by the solar basically we are setting up setting up moored so that we have a starlink but basically we're setting it up for communications yep and we have uh, set up some Anderson plugs on the back there so that we've got, we can hook in our angle for beer. Okay, but separate to those two Anderson plugs, we have our Starlink communications, right? So we've set up power so we can power stuff. And we've set up solar so that solar charges the battery and the battery powers all of this stuff on the back and also the Starlink. And we've installed a UHF, yeah, which if you, look, if you look in there. I'm keeping that. Yeah. <laughs> so if you look in there, you can see, I mean, that is gold. That is, it didn't like, it didn't, it definitely didn't look like that when we started, Jack. There's probably only two blokes in the world don't know this much about auto elect. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be both of them, Jack. Right. Well, I thought Danny. Danny oh, Danny. Yeah, yeah, Danny is. Yeah, Danny. Danny had the fun of smashing his hands up with oh, yeah, bloody yeah. spanner. So, so the wiring, although this, something else going to drop out? No. Although that looks confusing, it's nowhere near as confusing as the power solar setup we need to get all that back stuff going. So the Starlink runs off 48 volts. The car runs off 12 volts. Let's work our way back from the Starlink. The Starlink needs 48 volts. So at some stage, we've got to step up from 12 to 48. So that happens here. So this converts 12 volts to 48 volts, right? This is 12 volt power coming in the red and black. And then we have 48 volts coming out on the yellow and black. So here we have Essendon coming in and there you have Richmond going out. Yaosheng, and Yaosheng is the, is, provides the POE, which is the, the power for this contraption here, which is going to drive the Starlink. That one connects into there. So that's a permanent fixture. And that plug is loomed up. Yes, to the top. Runs up to the top here where Danny's installed a nice, beautiful plug. And when we've got it set up, we'll have it as a the weatherproof plug. So that, that is to enable us in doing a quick swap between vehicles with our Starlink hat, you know, our Starlink terminal. We can put it from one vehicle to another as we need it. And the cars are just rigged up and you jump into the car, you flick the relay on. So there's a switch that's at the front of the cab. Here's the relay. That powers this relay, which will turn on everything after the fact, which is the right, so that AOE injector and everything. And then over here, we've got our router, which is a Ubiquiti air cube, which the main reason we use those is they are very affordable and they're quite capable. They work at um, 2.4 gigahertz and they are very, very reliable and we've got a few of them. 
So carrying on out. So when it comes down to picking the ultimate setup for Starlink out in the outback, we reckon you can't really go past a 12 volt conversion or 24 volt. There's not much difference in them really. And running a different router, preferably something that's 2.4 gigahertz, but that's our preference and that's so we can have a little bit further range from the vehicles with our comps. Because when we're out and about in these, it's not so much for high speed downloads. Now there are a couple of five gigahertz capable routers out there and I'd recommend that you get something with a type C because we've found with everything that we've got with micro, we're having to put a bit of silicon or a little bit of Sikaflex on them to make sure that they hold in place. So we've got on this car, got the antenna accessories unit on the top and that's mainly due to the rubber mounts on the magnets because that'll prevent any scratching. So that's the one that we use switching between different vehicles at this stage. It's also because our Trackify unit is up on Bruiser, which is at the top end of the station. We found that that one's more work ready because it can take a little bit more of a hiding. If you drop it, it's not gonna damage anything. So we've got this set up on the top and there's a weatherproof plug, which we will standardize over to. So it's just a standard ethernet port and we'll put it over to the steel one when we've got a few more of these but that means that it's much like a John Deere Green Star hat that you can switch vehicle to vehicle and then inside we've got the loom so mounted up nicely in here we've got the solar charge controller it's got the fuse on the side of it then we've got a relay that's controlled from the front our ubiquity air cube, voltage converter, USB power, and then we've got these units over here for being able to use our Starlink standard plug. Then it's just routed through and onto the back, and then we've got a power line to the front where our relay is commanded from. And down here, is our power switch and then that means that this vehicle can be turned off and you can still have internet connectivity uh, and running everything down at 12 volts is better for your power management if you're running an inverter there's nothing really wrong about that but you're just creating heat and our biggest challenges out here are things like battling the heat this unit's pretty good one thing that'd be good is to have it as a separate battery and so then when you start and stop the car you won't lose connectivity but it's doing the job for now there's other parts to get to make that but because we've already got all the routing for it it's not going to be a hard conversion in general yeah we'd say that an australian made bracket or unit for your mounting your star link into is you know hard to beat because we're here in australia and it's cheaper for us to get something australian made and then you're supporting local and then setting up a loom in your car, and especially if you've got multiple vehicles that you're going to be using, but you only want to have the one subscription, means that you can just move the hat between them and it's relatively low cost. The setup inside is around 200, 250 bucks. Then your labor to route it and set it all up. But for us, it's pretty good. So let us know what things you would do differently in your setup or if you want to know more about the systems, reach out and we'll get back to you and we'll answer the comments below. And yeah, we highly recommend Starlink. The most exciting thing for us is going to be probably changing over to Optus late 2024 when Optus start doing direct to mobile stuff, which won't make this completely redundant, but for a communications only perspective, it will be pretty awesome because something we're looking at is seeing how we'd go with connectivity in the air, because that's just going to change the industry completely. Righto, thanks for tuning in. And there's a link below to the Trackify unit. If you want to grab one of those, let them know that you found out about it through us on our YouTube page. They're pretty good people to deal with. And we use Trackify for logging our hours when using the road trains. And this is just an extra level, you know, running a Trackify unit in your truck like this means that anywhere in Australia, you're gonna have 
safety and a backup because you're going to have excellent communications everywhere that you go, which means you're going to be in contact all the time, unless you don't want to be. Righto. Thanks everyone. Check out those Trackify units and if you're a truck driver, let us know what you reckon of Trackify. They haven't paid us or anything for recommending them. I've just found it a lot more convenient than using my paper log book and it's even better that they've got solutions for your Starlink systems. So yeah, check them out and we will see you in a, another video. Cheers.